Under recording, I set all the relevant data that is necessary for the recording of significance. Here is the first difference between the settings of the SD card storage and data storage on the NVR network video recorder. The menu item Overwrite activates the when the storage space in the system is completely full, the oldest video recordings will be automatically overwritten. When accessing the camera, this pertains to the SD card, and for the NVR network video recorder, it pertains to the hard drive. In both variants, the recordings will start again from the beginning once the hard drive is full, can be overwritten. Depending on the size of the hard drive or SD card, for example, a week, two months or half a year can be recorded. Pre-recording means that the camera not only saves images from the moment of motion detection, but also the 10 seconds before the alarm. I can only activate this setting and deactivate. Here, I would have liked to set the exact time that should be safeguarded additionally before the alarm is triggered. These recordings are really crucial, significant, and essential. Very exciting and quite relevant to me. For example, if I consider a... I watch a recording of the badger that is once again coming over from the neighbor's garden to my side. I usually miss the first one to two meters of the badger in the video. I would have liked to have that. A little more pre-recording. Moving the recording sets, the additional recording duration, after the last alarm trigger. In my opinion, the minimum should be 30 seconds. As long as there is a permanent alarm trigger in the image, this value is always taken from the last one. Detected motion. A crowd moving in the frame for over two hours would therefore account for two. Approximately hours and 30 seconds will be recorded. The schedule determines when the camera will record. The recording can be set via the timer. At the activated time, it will always start. Recorded. I can also trigger recording by alarm trigger or motion detection. Control, I combine options, motion detection. Can I additionally distinguish whether the recording is separated by person detection? Vehicle detection or pet detection should be marked. I find it to be sensible. The recordings with alarm activation 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. To control and activate all additional markers for motion detection, we'll give the email address later. Here I can set up where a motion alarm can be reported, for example, via email. I have this data, but already saved centrally in the settings of the NVR network video recorder. In the FTP settings, you can I can set additional storage locations for video recordings. If I have neither an NVR network video recorder nor a if I use an SD card, I can for example connect an external hard drive, a computer, I can set up a NAS or a cloud service. I can enter the access data in this menu. Images videos are directly saved to external storage. The push notification is the last point. If the function is activated, I will receive automatically a push notification to my phone as soon as motion is detected. In the menu network, I first get an overview of which network my camera is in, is located, and which IP has been assigned. If I scroll the image a little down, I see here are the advanced settings. There may well be a need for adjustments here. When I click on if you want to access the camera from outside via the internet, the corresponding ports need to be opened on your router. This can also be done automatically using the UPnP function. I can also open the ports myself. The pre-configured NTP settings are OK. With this setting, the time is automatically synchronized with the internet. This, the data already fits very well. The automatic synchronization occurs every 1440 minutes means that the clock runs relatively accurately and consistently. In the storage menu, the camera's SD card is to see an error message. When I click on the card, a small menu opens. I see the message that the SD card is installed, but not yet formatted. I will take care of that. Now after, I confirm the warning message about data loss when formatting. After the formatting automatically restarts the camera. It takes a little while before I have access again and can switch to the settings. Under storage, I can now see that of my 256 GB, only 239 GB are actually usable. 280 MB are already in use. The last menu item. These are the system settings. Under user management, I can create new users, delete, block or change the passwords. Under date and time, there is the option to to switch the time format from 24 hours to 12 hours. I can also adjust the date format to my preferences to adjust accordingly. 
I let the time synchronize via the internet. Here I can also set the automatic transition from daylight saving time to standard time. My automatic synchronization doesn't make much sense for this setting, but it doesn't hurt. Not either. Under the menu item, Maintenance, it is about the care of the camera. The auto upgrade is automatically set. The camera independently checks if there is a new firmware version, installs it independently. The camera software is therefore always up to date. Status, I can also manually test the firmware for an update. Currently, however, there is no new one. Firmware version, if there is an update that does not install automatically, I can also install it manually, of course. The automatic restart ensures that that the camera will automatically restart at a certain time. This makes makes sense, for example, when the camera no longer responds properly after a long period of operation. With the restart, the camera is reset, the settings stay. A restart takes about 20 to 30 seconds. The default setting is Sunday at 02 dollars. But you know from my video on the installation of the NVR network video recorder that this setting is definitely should be adjusted. Each Reolink camera has the same factory setting for rebooting. A, an uninvited guest thus knows that your camera is off on Sunday at 02 Olao for 20 to 30 seconds. The menu item Restore resets the camera to factory settings. But I can also do that directly on the camera. With Restart, the camera will be restarted. So you can see, setting up the camera is not that difficult. The connection, the network is not a devil's work as long as the network cables are laid out. Before I finish the settings, I will take a quick look at the NVR. Network Video Recorder. Start the camera menu from the NVR. Network Video Recorder. Here, I can already see the settings that I just made about the camera menu. However, there are differences in the monitor menu. I also have the recording activation, overriding and pre-recording here, but with the setting Move Recording to set the recording duration to of the last movement, up to 10 minutes can be recorded here. At the camera, I had activated the middle value with 30 seconds. The packing duration indicates how long a... The maximum length of a video file can be before the recording is split and a new file. 30 minutes is the default value. I can set the length to 60 minutes, which is one hour extend. The timer and alarm settings can also be configured here. Here, I also have the option to apply my settings directly to all cameras that are connected to the NVR network video recorder. So you see, with just a few clicks and a little bit of time investment, you can set up each camera individually just as you need it. Or you can use the function of the NVR network video recorder and transfers the settings centrally to all cameras simultaneously. I will not introduce you to the playback page of the alarm recordings in this video. I think it is self-explanatory. You can use the filter in the timeline to select what you want to search for. Do you want all motion alerts? vehicle detection, human detection, or the badger with animal recognition. With every firmware and with every software upgrade, there are also new features. For example, the time-lapse mode, which is available for many camera models. This enables automatic time-lapse recordings. This is another reason to regularly perform firmware updates. Here's a tip from me. Always use the automatic search for new upgrades do not always work, therefore, I have set up a routine through my home assistant that notifies me of firmware updates. From there, I can also install the update automatically, or I can download the new firmware directly from the website and install it manually. I hope I was able to give you a better understanding of setting up the Reolink cameras with my video. If you have any questions and want to exchange ideas with me, just write them in the comments under the video, the comment section. I will respond to you as quickly as I can. If you have any questions about the surveillance system, if you're interested and want to replicate it, I would be thrilled if you could use my product links. Can be found in the description under the video as well. The NVR, network video recorder, the various cameras, everything I use, I have linked for you there. You will get the same price as I and my channel receive a small commission this helps me finance my projects. Thank you very much that you support me. Thank you also for giving me a like at the latest now. For this video, subscribe to my channel, then you won't miss any new videos. And I hope you will be back for the next video as well. Until then, I say goodbye. See you soon.